Paddling a canoe, kayak, or raft is fun. Paddling is also a great way to spend time outdoors. Boating in a canoe, kayak, or raft involves a lot more than just hanging on for the ride. You have the responsibility to manage the risks of your outing so that your time on the water is spent enjoyably. That means learning how to paddle correctly, ensuring you don't boat while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, making sure to wear a life jacket, and learning what to do if trouble arises. There are some risks that are inherent to every boating activity. You will possibly encounter downed trees, rocks, low head dams, strong currents, and uneven slippery bottoms and shorelines. These obstacles or obstructions may be visible above the water. Some may be submerged and not obvious. Weather can change abruptly, particularly during summer. High water and wind can add difficulty to any paddling trip and coastal tides can make paddling difficult, if not treacherous. Other risks include, but are not limited to, not wearing your life jacket, not using appropriate equipment, and ignoring the instructions of your paddle sports equipment provider. Paddling is a risk activity that can result in injury or even death, particularly if done carelessly or recklessly. To paddle smart, you must be careful and responsible. Smart paddling will greatly reduce the chances of an incident that will spoil your trip. Your professional paddle sports provider wants you to have a good time and to be aware of the risks of your trip and how to deal with those risks. This video provides you with information about some of the common risks associated with paddling. It will also give you basic instruction on how to paddle a canoe, kayak, or raft. The first step toward an enjoyable outing is to wear your life jacket. Your life jacket must fit snugly and be secure to give the best protection. Even if you're an excellent swimmer, wearing your life jacket will keep you afloat so you can help others or help retrieve floating gear. It is your responsibility to wear your life jacket. Children should always wear a life jacket. Where state laws do not exist, federal law requires that children under the age of 13 wear a life jacket when aboard a canoe, kayak, or raft. Set a good example for youngsters. Wear your life jacket. A life jacket should be buckled and zipped and should be correctly fitted so that it doesn't rise above your head when you're in the water. To ensure your life jacket is fitted correctly, pull on the shoulders of the jacket. If it rises up, it needs to be tightened or perhaps you may need another size. The second step toward an enjoyable outing is to not be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Nearly half of all fatal accidents from small boats involve the use of alcohol. Boating while under the influence of alcohol or drugs can result in fines and other penalties, including jail. Most novice paddlers ask us what kinds of things they should bring along on their trip. There are several items you should bring that will help you have an enjoyable experience. Wear shoes to protect your feet. Many river bottoms have sharp rocks, debris, or broken glass. We know a lot more now about skin protection than we used to. Not only will sunblock protect you from sunburn, it will also help prevent long-term damage to your skin. Wear sunblock even on cloudy days. Sunglasses are also a good option. If you wear glasses, a strap or string can keep them from getting lost. Keeping hydrated on the water is very important. Bring drinks in non-breakable containers. Dehydration can happen quickly when you're spending time in the sun. Snacks or a lunch will help keep your energy up. Always pack your food and drinks in waterproof containers. Remember, everything you take with you is at risk of getting wet or lost. Bring an appropriate waterproof container or dry bag to store your personal gear. You may tie these items into your boat, but don't ever leave lengths of rope loose in the boat. You could become tangled if you capsize. And by all means, never tie yourself or any person or pet to your boat. Getting in and out of these boats and moving around in them can be an unsettling experience. Bring the boat parallel to the shore. Keep three points of contact with the boat, such as two hands and a foot, or both feet and your seat. Move slowly and keep your weight low. This is important for both canoes and kayaks. When two people are getting in a tandem canoe, usually the heavier person gets in the back or stern first, while the front or bow paddler holds the boat steady. 
The stern paddler then steadies the boat for the bow paddler. The order is reversed for exiting the boat. Try and minimize movement once you're aboard. If you must move, keep your weight low and balanced over the center line of the boat. Remember, three points of contact at all times. Your shoulders should stay within the sides of the boat to keep it from tipping over. If you lean out over the edge of the boat, the boat can slip out from under you. Another way to minimize your risk of tipping is to avoid obstacles. If you can't avoid an obstacle, then knowing what to do is important. If you're approaching low-hanging branches, never grab onto them. Simply push low-hanging branches out of your way or duck under them while being careful to minimize your movement. If you hit a rock or submerged log sideways, lean downstream. This will enable the water to pass under the boat while minimizing the risk of capsize. If you do happen to capsize, don't panic. Taking a few simple steps can help you get to where you can get back in your boat and finish your trip. If you're close to shore in calm water, simply swim your boat to shore and dump out any water. Once your boat is empty, you can get back on your way. If you're paddling on the coast and are too far from shore to get back easily with your boat, you may have to do a boat over boat rescue and an in-water re-entry. If you are on a river in moving water, stay upstream of your boat. Hang on to your boat and paddle if possible. Roll face up and keep your body flat with your legs pointed downstream. Use your feet to push off of rocks and other obstacles. When you get to a calmer area, you can backstroke to shore. An exception to swimming on your back is if you're approaching a downed tree or log. These are called strainers. If you find yourself approaching a strainer, abandon your gear and swim aggressively away. Keep your boat downstream to ensure you don't wind up between your boat and the tree. If you're being swept into a strainer, swim aggressively toward it on your stomach. Grab as high up as you can and pull yourself as far out of the water as possible or over the strainer. If you can't clear the strainer, don't try to rescue yourself. Have your companions contact your outfitter and emergency services immediately to report the incident and your location. Then wait for assistance from your outfitter or an emergency crew. River bottoms can be especially dangerous. Standing up in current is asking for trouble. You could step into a crevice or crack in rocks or get tangled in roots, tree branches, or other sunken debris. Moving water has tremendous force and will prevent you from working yourself free or even push you over and hold you underwater. If you do capsize, don't stand up. Swim on your back toward shore until the water is knee deep or less and you're out of the fastest current. When you are on the water, a big responsibility you have is to be considerate of other river users. Paddle as far away from anglers as practical. Cross busy waterways only when necessary and do so quickly. Also, please respect landowners. Don't trespass on private property. Don't leave litter. And always leave the area cleaner than you found it. Your professional paddle sports provider will give you information that will help you have an enjoyable paddle. In addition to showing you this video, he or she may present you with additional safety information and or paddling instruction, a map or directions for the river, and instructions for fitting your life jacket. If you're unsure about any of the information you're provided or feel you need additional information, please talk to your paddle sports pro. He or she will be glad to help you further. Paddling a kayak is easy. Position your hands evenly along the paddle shaft, at least shoulder width apart. Keep the blade close to the boat to track in a straight line. Take a stroke by reaching forward with one arm and placing the paddle blade in the water as far forward as comfortable. Lift the paddle out of the water as it reaches your hip. Alternate taking paddle strokes on each side to go straight. To turn, sweep the paddle through the water in an arc away from the boat. Back paddle to stop. If two people share a tandem kayak, they should paddle on the same side at the same time to avoid getting tangled up. Paddling a canoe is easy too. Keep your paddle blade close to the side of the boat to track in the straightest line. Canoes tend to veer. Switching sides every few strokes can fix this problem. 
In most boats, five or ten strokes per side is about right. The person in back can also trail the paddle behind them with the blade on edge. Push the paddle away from the canoe or pull it in toward the boat to make corrections or to steer. Another way to turn easily is to sweep the paddle through the water in an arc away from the boat. To stop a canoe, paddle backwards. When paddling in tandem, canoeists should always paddle on opposite sides and time their strokes together. Lots of communication will allow paddlers to work together to go straight, turn, or stop. If you're paddling a raft, keep your paddle blade close to the side of the boat to track on the straightest line. Rafts are more difficult to turn than a canoe, and your guide or the paddler at the back of the raft will help steer, often by using his or her paddle as a rudder. If you're sitting side by side, you can turn by one person paddling forward while the other paddles backwards. Thank you for coming paddling with us today, and we hope you have an enjoyable time. We hope these tips help you enjoy your experience on the water. We certainly thank you for joining us. And don't forget to wear your life jacket.